The new 3D workflow in After Effects is bananas. In this tutorial, I'll break down how I achieved this shot, which you probably found via my Instagram page. For this, you're going to need a scene you want to put 3D stuff into, as well as a 3D model. I found mine on Sketchfab. Alright, let's get into it. Alright everyone, so go ahead and open up After Effects and just make sure that you're using the latest version. I'm using version 25.1 at the moment. Uh, you will need the latest version in order to have this 3D workflow. Okay, so once you've got that going, we're going to take the main base clip that we're going to use and we're going to create a new composition. We can do that by dragging our clip into this little icon over here and we've got a new composition. Next, we're going to find our 3D model that we are using. I'm using this banana over here, but obviously you can you know, use whatever, whatever you prefer. And we're going to drag that into our composition. And it's going to come up with this dialog that says the 3D models in your composite require the use of advanced the advanced 3D renderer. And it's gone ahead and changed this for me automatically, which you can see over here. Now, by default, it's set to classic 3D. You can also do this by going to composition settings, 3D renderer, and changing it over here. Okay, cool. So now that we've got our 3D model in there, let's move it into position. Now, there's several ways to do this. One is you can click on your model in uh, over here and then hit P, and then you can move it in the Z axis like that. So that's one way to do it. So I'm just going to move it back. But you can also use uh, these arrows over here as well as just moving it around like so. And once we've done that, we are ready to now start lighting it. So when it comes to lighting, you want it to be motivated by what's actually happening in the scene. Now, if you don't know how the scene was lit up, you'll just have to take a guess by looking at your scene and looking at how the light falls on the objects. It just so happens that I actually lit the scene and I know how I did it. I used a key light over here uh, to light up the face and I used a backlight around here to give me a bit of a hair light and, and give this like nice orange glow. There's also a third type of light in real life, which is really just your ambient lighting. In the real world, you have light bouncing around everywhere. You've got light coming from the computers, the reflections, this neon sign over here. So there's really three kinds of lights uh, happening. So we're going to mimic that. So the first thing we're going to do is create our key light. So I'm going to right click and create a light. And it's going to give me a light type, a color, an intensity, and a fall off. Now I'm going to leave it as a point light. There are other types of lights you can use. A point light is kind of like a light bulb, like a sphere. It casts light everywhere. If you want a little bit more of a controlled light, you can use a spotlight or a par parallel light. But for now, I'm going to use a point light. And I'm going to call this key light. And I'm going to keep the intensity as it is. I'm going to keep the fall off uh, none. And I'm going to click OK. And we can already see that it's having some kind of effect. But what I want to do is I'm going to move that closer to that banana. So I'm going to copy the Z position of my banana and I'm going to apply it to the Z position of my key light. And once I do that, I'm going to move it forward a little bit because I know that my key light was a little bit in front. And then I'm going to move it to this side. Let's move it this way a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to move it down because I know that my key light was around roughly around here. OK, so now we've got our key light going. I know it doesn't look great, but it will. There are a few issues that we can already see. One is that there's like the shadow over here, but we can fix that later with a bit of ambience. For now, what we'll do is increase the intensity. And you can do that by clicking this drop down over here going to light options and cranking this up to an appropriate level. And you can always go back and change this later, you know, so you don't have to get it exactly right, just close enough. Okay, so now we've got our key light. Now let's get our backlight. So I'm just going to simply dupli dupli du duplicate this <laughs> and I'm going to call this backlight. And I'm going to move this back here because I know that that's where around my backlight was. And I'm going to move this back a bit in the Z direction around here for now. OK, so now we want to see if this light is actually doing anything. Right now, it's subtle, so we're going to crank up the intensity. So let's crank that up. There we go. We're starting to get a little bit of an effect. 
And by the way, something I forgot to mention is that I actually took a reference banana shot, which is this. I actually put a banana on a stick and I moved it around my scene just to see how the light falls on the actual banana. And I can use this as a reference. So what I'll do is I'll find a spot like here where I know I want my 3D banana to be. I'll right click and I'll go to time. Where's time? And I'll go freeze frame. And I'll just use the pen tool to crop this out. And there we go. We actually have a reference banana, which I can just move it down a little bit just so that we have a reference. Great, so when I look at my reference banana, I can see that, yeah, there's a little bit of a golden edge light happening over here, which is kind of what I want over here with my backlight. So what I'll do is I'll change the color of my backlight to match my actual backlight in real life. And I wanted to have this kind of orange hue, so I'm gonna use this uh, eyedropper tool. I'm gonna capture that light, and I'm just gonna increase the goldenness and maybe bring it down a little bit towards the reds just to give it that orange vibe because that's what I know was my actual light that I used. There we go. And I'm starting to see a little bit more of an orangey kind of effect, which is good. I'm gonna move this backlight a little bit back here. So this is really where the light was. So there we go. I think I'm starting to like the way that it looks. It looks closer to what's happening with my reference banana where that little golden light is hitting the edge right there. Beautiful. Okay, so now that we've got our key light and our backlight, I'm gonna now add an ambient light. So simply put, I'm just gonna duplicate what I have already, and I'm gonna change the light type over here to ambient. And that looks a little intense. Notice that the ambient light doesn't actually have a position because it's just applying it everywhere. And I'm just gonna start reducing the intensity until I'm happy and I can see that the shadows have sort of disappeared. There we go, kind of around there. There we go, so I'm happy with that. And I might make a few other adjustments and let's just rename that ambient so we don't get confused. And finally, again, you can always go back and adjust these things. I might lower that intensity of the key light just a little bit. And there we go, our banana is lit. But before we do that, let's take this background video, let's duplicate it, and this will make sense later. I'm just gonna move it right here. And I'm just gonna turn it off, and we're just gonna include this as well as our banana and all our lights. And we're gonna click pre-compose on all of that. And we're just gonna call that banana one. Great. So now we have a banana layer. And if we go into it, we can see that we've got our lights, our banana, and this, which is turned off. And the reason I did this is so that I can turn it on again in here in case I have a need to reference, see what the banana or the object looks like against the background plate. But we're gonna leave that off for now. And we're gonna go back to our main comp. All right, so now that we've got it nested, let's start doing the color grading. So you can generally break this down into two steps. One is focusing on the actual shadows, midtones, and highlights, the contrast, the exposure, all of that stuff, and then focusing on the color stuff. So as a starting point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a tint effect. I'm gonna drag it onto here, and I'm gonna map the blacks to a darker part of my image, maybe this seat over here, or I can even you know go for my hair over here. And I'm gonna map the whites to a brighter part of my image, maybe this bit of the banana over here. Cool, and I'm just gonna tone that down, like maybe to about here. Now we don't wanna go too far with this because if we go too far, we start to lose that orange edge. So we don't wanna do this too much, so maybe about here. And there we go. And we can always go back and change this later. So the next step is we're gonna go add a Lumetri color effect to here. And the first thing I wanna do is I actually want to change the color temperature because I know that the light I used was a little bit cooler. So let me bring it towards a cooler color temperature around so. And I'm also gonna increase the contrast just a little bit. And 
what I want to do is I want to be able to control the yellow without affecting this orange edge. So to do that, I can go to the curves adjustment layer. I can go down to hue versus saturation, use this eyedropper tool and just bring down maybe just the yellows on its own. I might actually go into this banana layer and maybe increase the intensity of this backlight just a little bit, just to get a bit more of that orange edge. There we go. Bit more orange edge and I might bring that down even a little bit more to give it a bit more of an orange just like that yeah we go there we go I like that okay so going back to here I'm starting to get what we want I'll just bring that yellow back in a little bit and there we go I am happy with that for now and we're done with the coloring step All right, so the next step is adding a little bit of blur to match the lens characteristics of what I filmed with. Now I filmed this using a 50 millimeter f1.8 and I had it set on f1.8 to be focusing on the face. So it means that everything that's not aligned with the face should be slightly blurry. And we can confirm that with this reference banana, it is a little bit blurry. So we're going to add a Gaussian blur into our banana layer. And we're just going to increase that a little bit to taste, say around here. There you go. I like that. Now, again, you can adjust this to whatever feels right for you. It's just to give it that feeling that this is filmed on a real lens. Now, as a final step to make it really come alive, let's add some animation. So we're going to go to our banana one layer. We're going to enable our background play again, just to see how it looks against the background. And we're going to click our banana and I'm just going to add some basic animations here. Nothing crazy. I'm just going to go into my rotation, might add a key, few keyframes here in the XYZ rotation, move to the end over here, add some keyframes. And I'm just going to start rotating this. So maybe I might rotate this like three times. I want to rotate this maybe once and I'm going to rotate this also once. So we've got this kind of animation happening like that. And as a final step, I'm actually going to also add a sort of an up and down bobbing animation. So I'm just going to add a few keyframes, keep this really simple. I could probably do this with an expression, but I can't be bothered right now figuring out how to do that. So I'm just going to click a few points here. And for each of these positions, I'm just going to move it up like that. And I'm just going to duplicate that value for the other one. There we go. So now it's got like an up and down sort of movement happening. And if we go to our graph editor, we can see it's terrible. <laughs> so let's select that and let's hit F9. And now we've got a bit of an up and down sort of movement happening. Sweet. Done. And don't forget to always turn off this uh, FX video layer over here before you go back here. So there you go. You've got a banana that looks like it's integrated into your scene. Now there's a bunch of other things you can do with 3D workflow in After Effects, such as you can get your 3D objects to cast shadows into your world. You can also add 3D objects into moving shots, but I won't cover that for now. I'll cover that in another tutorial. If you'd like to see those kinds of stuff, let me know in the comments and also subscribe to my channel. But thank you so much for watching and go make epic shit.